All right, so before we continue today talking about the derivative and how it relates to a graph or some uh, table, for instance, are there any questions on the homework from the last section? If some of you had a chance to start it or take a look at it, figured I'd ask. That was on page 99 and 100. Homework going once, going twice, gone. All right, so yesterday we were completing this table on page 101 where we were analyzing uh, a tangent line that we were drawing on the graph. We were estimating the slopes. I'm not sure about the values we specifically got yesterday. These were the numbers that I estimated. I know some of them were a little different, which is completely okay, because an estimation is, after all, a, an educated guess. But these were roughly the numbers we got yesterday, and we filled in kind of the behavior of the graph. Is it increasing, decreasing? Do you have a max or do you have a min? We also practiced writing the equation of a tangent line, which is always good. But today, we're going to take a look at these two columns a little bit more in depth. We're going to try to make some relationships or connections uh, within this table. So if you do me a favor and go ahead and flip to the next page, at the top it says what inferences can you make, Okay, what conclusions or relationships can you make about the value of the derivative, aka the slope, and the behavior of the graph. So you might have to do some flipping because in order to answer this question, we're going to reference the table from yesterday. Can you guys take a second and look at those two first columns and try to find a connection or a relationship between them? Do you notice any patterns? Do you see something? Yeah? Uh, function is going in a certain direction, then um, the slope or the derivative will be going in a similar kind of direction. Similar direction. Derivative is slope, so you can use them interchangeably, okay? So what do you mean by direction? For instance, if our graph is going up, okay, if we're increasing? Yeah, if we're increasing, it's the slope will also be increasing. If we're at a relative max, it will flatten off. Below it, okay. So Ryan's noticing that if the graph is increasing, notice how the slope is, I wouldn't say necessarily increasing. What, what's all the relationships between 4, 2, and 3? They're all, they're positive. Okay, so notice how if our graph is increasing, our derivative, aka slope, is positive. There's one relationship. Um, Ryan also hinted about the decreasing values when he was talking about direction. Notice how all the decreasing values, yeah? All the zeros are minimums and maximums. There you go. Okay, so we have clear distinctions here. If we have a positive derivative, aka slope, our graph is increasing. Does that make sense? If your slope is positive, aren't you going up? Okay. If your slope is negative, aren't you going down? AKA decreasing. Uh, Josh noticed how at these maxes and mins, okay, you have a slope value of zero, which is good. Can we determine though specifically when we have a max or when we have a min? Because notice how in either case it's zero, but how can you specify if it's one over the other? Because if I tell you my slope is zero, you know it's a max or a min. Is there something else you can identify on that table to help you specifically state if it's a max or a min? What do you think? Um, if it's a max, it will be increasing on. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, if it's a max, it will be increasing going from the negative 
side. Yep. But then decrease and coming from the negative positive side. There you go. And then uh, reverse that for minimums. The minimums. All right. So let's make let's hope this makes sense. If you have a maximum, aka a high point, weren't you increasing before that and then decreasing after? That's what causes a high point. You go up and then you go down. Similarly, a minimum, you are decreasing and then you change to increasing, right? So the slope of zero is a necessity, okay? But you have this other condition as well where you have to determine what are you doing before this location and after this location. Is your slope changing from positive to negative or is it changing from negative to positive? So all those relationships we just discussed, we're going to go ahead and write them down on the back page. Okay. So the first one we said was f of x is increasing. Okay, the original graph is increasing if the derivative, okay, I'm using math notation here, f prime, if the derivative is positive aka slope is positive. Um, but in using math notation, what would we write to state that it's positive? <coughs> All positive numbers are <coughs> what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. Positive they approach positive infinity, okay. So we're going towards the right, yep. All positive numbers are bigger than zero, if you think about a number line. Yep. Okay, so using math notation, f of x is increasing if the derivative, aka slope, is bigger than zero, aka a positive value. Another relationship we found was f of x is decreasing if the derivative was negative. But again, using math notation, that would be less than zero. And then we had these two other relationships for a maximum or a minimum. So maybe we'll say f of x has a max if, okay, this is where we had kind of two conditions. The first one was that the derivative had to equal zero. But what was the second one? Not only did you have to have a slope of zero, but something else was going on in that table. How did you know you had a max? Yeah. Um, the surrounding derivatives. Mm -hmm. were the surrounding slopes, the surrounding derivatives, yeah. All right, so here's our max. The derivative, aka slope, before it was positive, and the slope, aka derivative, after it was negative, okay? So in order to have a maximum, you have to have a slope of zero, but then you change, you change from a positive derivative to a negative derivative, aka slope. So the derivative has to equal zero and change from positive to negative before it and after that spot. We're going to write a similar statement but for a minimum. Okay, f of x has a minimum if the derivative equals zero. But this time, the derivative also has to change from negative to positive. So we have four key relationships here. If we can determine the slope, aka the derivative, we can then infer or conclude what the original graph or function was doing, how it was behaving. Was it increasing, decreasing? Did it have a maximum, aka high point? Did it have a minimum, aka low point? 
all based off of the slope. Okay, this very important concept called a derivative. So we're going to explore these four relationships a little bit further today. Okay, do those make sense though? Remember, derivative means slope. Let's not lose sight of that fact. Okay, so yesterday when we filled out the table on the front, we were basing all of our information off of a graph. Okay, we had a picture. Um, today we're going to kind of step it up a bit, and if you take a look at the rest of that page, we no longer have a graph. This time we have a table of values. So it's not necessarily as informative as a graph would be, but we still have pieces of information that we could probably use to our advantage. So we're going to fill out the same type of chart where we're going to estimate the derivative, determine the behavior, write the equation of a tangent line, but this time it's all based off of a table instead of a graph. I don't know if your last number is cut off there, but this should be 10. Okay, so we're going to take a look at, in this case, if we have a table of values, how can we estimate the derivative? Okay, so take a look at the little sentence at the top there. It says numerically, meaning using numbers from a table, the value of the derivative can be estimated by finding the slope of the secant line. Do you remember that word secant line? What does that mean? The definition of a secant line? Yeah? A line that crosses two points on the curve. Two points. Okay, secant line crosses two points. So we're going to estimate the slope between two points um, that specifically pass through the graph on either side of the point that we want to find the derivative of, okay, aka the tangent point, that one point of interest. So before we go ahead and tackle that, I just want to show you why we're doing it this way, okay, why we're calculating the slope of the secant line. So this kind of sinks in, okay. We're going to draw our little upside down parabola like we did on some of our other examples. And let's say we wanted to figure out the slope of the tangent line at this particular spot. If I were to pick a point before this spot, meaning on the left hand side, and I then were to pick a spot after it, meaning on the right hand side, and I were to calculate the slope between those two points, figure out rise over run, wouldn't the slope of that secant red line be very similar to the slope of that tangent black line? They're parallel lines, right? Parallel lines have the same slope, or at least roughly, because we're estimating now, okay? So the reason that we're going to do this is because, again, we don't have a graph, but in terms of the table of values, we're going to pick a point before our tangent point and after the tangent point to estimate the slope. Because notice how the slope of the secant line is roughly the same as the slope of that tangent line when you pick a point before and after. So let's go ahead and tackle this. We want our tangent point to be zero. Unfortunately, we don't have a graph to draw the tangent line on like we did yesterday. So using this table, we're going to have to pick a point before zero and after zero. Which ones do you want to use? Remember, these are x values. Go, Josh. Zero, one. Well, we can't pick zero. We've got to pick a point before zero and after zero. Uh, All right, so this is our tangent, this is our tangent location. Three, We're going to pick negative three and one. Yep. All right, so let's check it out. The slope at zero, aka derivative, the slope at one point, is roughly, in this case, the slope between the two secant points, one before it, one after it. So we're going to find the slope between these two points. We need the y's over the x's. So maybe we'll do 2 minus negative 3. That would change to a plus over negative 3 minus 1. Looks like we get 5 over negative 4. 
Okay, so that's an estimation of this, the derivative, the slope at this point. Might be a little off because we're just guessing, but it's an estimation. So based off of this derivative, can we determine what the f of x original function is doing at this point? How is it behaving? What do you think? Yeah. Decreasing. How do you know? Uh, because we have a negative slope. We have a negative slope. Oh, Perfect. Wonderful. We're going, yeah, you can kind of tell that based off the numbers too, right? From two to one to negative three, we're going down. So it kind of makes sense. Again, but notice how the slope is negative. So we know the original graph is decreasing at this location. Let's go ahead and just practice the equation of our tangent line, point slope form. We estimated the slope at zero to be negative five-fourths. Can we find the point value at zero from the original function? If you plug in zero into the table, what do you get out? Yeah? One. We get out one. Okay, notice how that's the y value. So if we put those pieces together, we'll have y minus one equals negative five-fourths times x minus zero. We're doing okay? Does that make sense why we pick a point before and after? Can we visually see why why we're doing this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and check out this next point. Let's say we wanted to estimate the slope or derivative at one. Let's go ahead and pick a point before one and after one on the f of x graph. So that would be zero and four, okay? Why do you think, let me ask you this, why do you think we're not picking, for instance, negative three and six or negative three and 10? Yeah. These ones are closer. Exactly, okay? So technically, we want to try to pick the closest ones. That way we're more accurate, okay? We're closer to the location that we're estimating the derivative for. So the closer you can get, the more accurate you are. So based off of those points, finding the slope, difference of y's over difference of x's, looks like we'll get negative one-fourth. So based off of that slope, how is the f of x graph behaving at this x location of one? Yeah. Still decreasing, still, like less so. Still decreasing, less so, yep, because it's a smaller slope. Yep, but it's still decreasing. All right, let's practice our tangent line. We said the slope at one was negative a fourth, the point at one based off the table is negative three. So our equation y plus three equals negative one fourth times x minus one. Do you guys think you can try the other two? Give it a shot? Yeah. Go ahead, okay? Check out the uh, derivative at four and the derivative at six. Yeah. Yeah.
Any takers on the four location? Fill out our chart. I'm going to give you a break for a second. Okay. Go, Coleman. Negative four over five. Good. And then how's f of x behaving? Increasing. Perfect. So then what was your equation? Um, one minus zero equals negative four over five times x minus four. x minus four. How'd we do? Good? Awesome. What about six? Slope behavior equation? Let's not all jump up at once. Go ahead, Daniel. Um, yeah, one, third. one third, good. Uh, okay. Um, you may have used the wrong point. If oh, this, oh, oh, it's okay. So it's y, y plus seven. There we go. Six. Minus six. Yep, good job. How do we do at that six location? Pretty good? Awesome. All right. Now, I know this isn't uh, part of the directions or anything, but I just want us to analyze this table a little bit further. Can you tell me where we might have a maximum or minimum on the f of x graph? Can you give me an x, perhaps an x location? where we have a high point or a low point. I'm stepping it up here. What do you think, Ryan? Uh, it seems like somewhere between 1 and uh, x values 1 and 4. Are you looking off the table, or are you looking off of this, this table? I'm looking off the... Um, the top one? Yeah, top one. Okay. Um, so I can understand that based off the top one. There actually might be a few different spots up here. Can you tell me based off of this one, though, where there might be one? How do you know? All right. Perfect. Okay, notice how I know there might be some other locations up here that Ryan was analyzing. We go from 2 to 1 to negative 3, but then we go back up to 0. Do you notice how we are increasing here? but then all of a sudden we have a in, or sorry, we're decreasing here, and then we have an increase. So that might be a change. Um, we're gonna have to take a look at that uh, later in this unit, but just based off of the work we did, notice how we change from decreasing to increasing. And if we change from a negative to a positive slope, doesn't that mean that we must have passed zero at some point as well? So we could anticipate a minimum somewhere between the x values of 4 and 6. Okay, we don't know exactly where, but at least we have an idea about where one of them might be happening. Okay, so that's a good analysis based off that table. All right, so let's continue with this idea of increasing, decreasing, maxes and mins. Take a look at the next page. We have a graph of a function, g of x. Okay, so this is an original graph. We're going to identify the characteristics of the derivative, okay, aka slope, and we're going to go ahead and justify our reasonings. So the first one we're going to check out here, where is the derivative less than zero, aka negative? If we want a negative slope, how is the original graph behaving? What should we be looking for? Yeah. Uh, we should be looking for decreasing. Decreasing. So we have uh, between negative four and negative two. Okay. So if you look at your graph, we are decreasing between negative four and negative two. If you were to trace that with your pencil, your pencil would be going down. Any other one? One to positive infinity, so at one and then all the way to the right, your graph is going down. 
So if we want a negative slope, the original function graph should be decreasing. That's one of our four relationships that we identified from that beginning table. Okay. What about if we wanted a derivative that was greater than zero, aka a positive slope? Where should we be looking on the original graph? Yeah. Increasing, okay. So if you were to trace that original graph, on which intervals would your pencil be going up? Can we identify those? What do you think, Lauren? Negative infinity, negative four? Negative two to one. Perfect. I don't know if I'm assuming here is something that I shouldn't be. Are we familiar with that U in the middle for union when you have more than one interval? Okay, perfect. Um, the values of x, x where the derivative equals zero. So where should we be looking on the original graph to figure out that slope value of zero? Good, Coleman? X equals negative four and what? and one. So those are, looks like maximums. So g of x should have a maximum. Is there another one? Yeah. Uh, it, also it also could have a minimum. Yep. So have, um, one at negative two. Exactly. Notice how, mm -hmm. Notice how this stipulation only had a slope of zero. So you can have a maximum or a minimum where your tangent line is flat, AKA slope of zero. It didn't also specify changing positive to negative, negative to positive, increasing to decreasing, anything like that. It was just a slope of zero. We doing okay? Perfect. All right. So. All this tangent line business that we're getting really good at, writing the equations of tangent lines, that's all nice um, and everything, but we're going to transition, not transition, but extend the tangent line information to something that's called a normal line. Maybe you've never heard that word before um, in terms of a math course, okay? So we're going to investigate what a normal line looks like. We've discussed tangent line, we've discussed secant line, and now we have this new line called normal. So over here we have the graph of this quadratic function. We are going to draw a tangent line at the x value of one and use that tangent line to estimate the slope or derivative at that point. So at the x value of one, we can find the point on our graph. And if you, as accurately as possible, try to draw a tangent line at that location, Looks something like that. Based off that tangent line we drew, can we estimate what the slope of that line is? Go ahead, Josh. Negative two. Negative two, I'd say so. Yep. Estimation. All right, let's go ahead and find the equation of that tangent line we just drew. So we gotta figure out a point and a slope. We already know the slope is negative two. Can we figure out the point value based off the graph? Yes, what'd you find? Uh, hmm? Positive two, yep. That point has a height of two. So putting that information together, equation, we'd have y minus two equals negative two times x minus one. Okay, that's nothing new. We've done that before. Okay, but now we're gonna investigate how a tangent line is related to this normal line. So in the next uh, sentence or directions here, it says the normal line is the line that is perpendicular to the tangent line at that point of tangency, okay, where you're only touching once. So can we figure out or perhaps dig deep 
and determine what perpendicular means in terms of these related lines? Is there a relationship? Yeah. Like crossing each other? Crossing each other at a 90 degree angle. Yeah. Okay, so graphically, the tangent and normal lines intersect at 90 degrees. Okay. We can also say that the normal line slope is the opposite reciprocal of the tangent line slope, aka derivative. All right. So let's go ahead and make sure that this uh, kind of clicks. When we go ahead and draw the normal line eventually, we should anticipate 90 degree intersection. Let's also use the idea of the opposite reciprocal slope to figure out the equation of this normal line, okay? So if we're gonna write the equation of a line, we gotta figure out a point, and we also gotta figure out a slope. Doesn't matter if it's normal line, tangent line, secant line, you need a point and a slope. So we're still focusing on this x location of one, okay, because that was our point of tangency where we only touch once. We already know the point value there is two. But in terms of finding the slope, we said we need the opposite reciprocal slope from the tangent line. What do you think, Josh? Uh, oh, positive, yeah. right. Yeah. So, there we go. So I know we got twos everywhere, okay? So if the derivative slope we said was two, we need the opposite reciprocal of that for the normal slope, which would be one half. Does that make sense? Normal is just another word that means perpendicular. Okay, so putting that information together, we have y minus two equals one half times x minus one. There's the equation of our normal line. So let's go ahead and graph that to see if we actually do in fact get that 90 degree intersection. So here's the point of tangency. We said the slope of the normal line should be a half. So from that point, if you go up one over two, you could go the other way, down one, left two. If you connect those, doesn't it look like they cross at a perfect 90 degree angle? You could draw in a little box there to signify that. So this would be your normal line. So we have tangent line, aka derivative. We have secant line, meaning two points. And we have normal line, which means perpendicular to the derivative, to the tangent line. We're doing okay? We're adding a new, new line in there. All right, let's check out another graph. Very similar to the one that we just did for g of x. We're gonna amp it up a bit here though. Notice how this graph represents h prime. So this is a derivative graph. This is a graph of slope. So we're analyzing something different here. Instead of starting with an original graph, we're starting with a graph that represents slope. Let's see if we can identify these particular locations. Can we figure out the intervals where the original function is increasing? If your original function is increasing, what's the relationship to the slope, aka derivative? Yeah. It's what? It's also increasing. Not necessarily increasing. Well, it's positive. It's positive. Okay. So we got to figure out where the derivative, aka slope, is 
positive. All right, now this is the graph of slope. So we need to figure out where is this graph positive. We are not analyzing the slope of this graph because this graph represents slope. So if we're trying to figure out where the derivative is positive and this graph is the derivative, where is this graph positive? It's a different way of analyzing it. Yeah. So you think this is a section we should be analyzing? Yes. Okay. All right. So this is, this section here is where h prime of x is increasing. Okay. We're trying to figure out where h of x is increasing. And to do that, we need to figure out where the derivative is positive. We are not looking at where this slope is increasing or decreasing. We have to look at where this graph is positive, has a positive value. Can we think about where we should be looking at on this graph? Where is this graph positive? What do you think, Josh? Above zero, aka above the x axis. Okay? This is what's a little tricky, and we're going to be working on this all year. We need to distinguish between what the graph is that we're given and what the information is that we're trying to figure out. Okay? Before, we had the original graph. I think it was g of x in the last example. That was really easy for us to determine where it was increasing and decreasing and what the slope represented. But that's no longer the case here. This is the graph of the derivative. And if we want the derivative to be positive, that means we want this graph to be positive, meaning above the x-axis. So if we think about where this graph is above the x-axis, we need to figure out what this interval is and what this one is. What do you think, Liam? Uh-huh. 3 comma infinity. All right. So since this is the graph of the derivative, we need to analyze where this graph is positive if we want the derivative to be positive. A little tricky. I was just saying, would you ever use brackets or no? Okay, so if you used a bracket, you're saying that this location right here is positive, but notice how this location is zero. Okay, which is not necessarily positive. So we're going to use parentheses there. Okay? All right, let's try this one. Where h of x, the original function is decreasing, we need the slope to be negative in order for the graph to behave that way, the original graph. So if the graph given to us is the derivative, we need to figure out where this graph is negative, aka below the x-axis. Can we figure out those intervals? Good, Daniel. Uh, negative infinity is negative 2. Okay. And 1 to 3. And 1 to 3. Perfect. All right. Let's check out the next one. We want the original graph to have a maximum what are the conditions for the derivative if we want a max? AKA a high point. What do you think, Liam? Uh, it, has to be zero. it has to be zero. And, because zero gave you a max or a min, what specifically states a maximum then. 
Yeah? You go from a positive slope, meaning increasing, to a negative slope, meaning decreasing. Okay, so we need a derivative value of zero, and the derivative changes, we'll say positive to negative. Okay, so let's start with the first, you think you have it? Yeah. Uh, is it absolute form? How'd you know? Good. Yeah. It went from positive. Okay, so this is the graph of the derivative. Notice how this point has a value of zero. It's on the x-axis. And if you look at before this point and after this point, notice how the derivative is positive before it because you're above the x-axis, and you're negative after because you're below. Again, this is the graph of derivative, of slope. So because we have that positive to negative change and we equal zero, there is a maximum on the original graph. We have no idea what the original graph looks like, but we're starting to get an idea based off of this derivative graph. Let's go ahead and check out a minimum. So we kind of have the same conditions here. A minimum also has a slope of zero, but this time we need to change from negative to positive. Can we find a location on the derivative graph where that happens? What do you think, Ryan? Yeah. Negative 2 and positive 3. Let's see. Negative 2, positive 3. So negative 2, positive 3 have derivative values of 0. And before that point, we are negative. After that point, we are positive. Really, really good. So if we had the time, which we don't because the bell's going to ring in a little bit, I would like to try to draw what this graph would look like. We know where we're increasing. We know where we're decreasing. We know where we have a max. We know where we have a min. We can put all that information to get a picture of what this original f of x function looked like. Okay? But we'll probably save that for tomorrow. All right? We do not. Oh, sorry. Tuesday. Tuesday. That's right. We doing okay? Hanging in there? All right. I will not be here on Tuesday or Wednesday.